My name is Teresa Lockwood. I reside in Violent, New Jersey, and um, I'm going to re be recording uh, Tony Cotto, uh, a, a false pastor of the Chestnut Assembly. He's basically trying to use my words, by the way, because I spoke against them um, and, and them perverting the word of God. Um, so he's pretending he's speaking per, uh, speaking against perverting the word of God. Um, he's I, He isolates people or whatever. Um, as he has done in the past and sat there and like, ang like angrily and aggressively saying, uh, if you go to another church, stay in your own church, don't come to their church. Um, so he, he's also basically, uh, perverting the Bible, uh, claiming that he's God. And um, that giving to him um, money is basically giving to God. Um, this is not in our Bible. We're not to actually uh, give tithes to them. It is basically a crime for um, <clears throat> um, that for them to basically ask for money from from anybody. Um, they're not of the body of Christ, and those who of us who are of the body of Christ and Christian true Christian ministers of God, we're not going to ask you for money. We're also not going to build these man-made churches whatsoever. Um, it's actually against Jesus' ministry and purpose of uh, recognizing that our bodies the temple they may echo that and and claim that or whatever but um I mean, they pervert the word of God. Um, they'll go back and forth because I basically spoke uh, spoke against them uh, that they're a church of man, and that would include their building and um, the state that they are in. <clears throat> Excuse me. They basically quoted my words uh, when I basically spoke and used a passage um, against them where um, it says that uh, God does not dwell um, um, in a temple made with the hands of man. So they quoted that and then they reverted back to their false teachings or whatever and claiming that, you know, that their, their, their church was in their church or their church building and whoever's accepted and who's not. So <laughs> the thing is, it's just that, um, <laughs> no, that can be not related to my household. Okay. Um, I just want you to know that no matter where I live, how big or small my house is or whatever. No, uh, you can't just come and move in my house. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just saying, but the thing is, is, um, Either way, so th I mean, all these churches have a false idea. I mean, after I basically, from experiences, uh, know that there was, a, 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 um, I said over about 50 churches. I said there's a whole lot more than that or whatever. I didn't know exactly how many there were. So the police, the fraudulent Pentecostals committing hate crimes against me. They're anti-theist atheists, by the way. They basically gave him the information about how basically how many churches are in violence. So he basically said, said there's about 140 uh, churches in violence. I just want to let you know that when there's a, a temple, uh, church um for the city um that city they had one temple for the city okay <coughs> and these churches are divided factions um against christ by the way and none of them are christian so um they're scamming people out of money and though they may speak against some things that are against god and a moral abomination like i said before like it's like muslim who basically is against um the lgbtqs or whatever but you know there's not a conversion there or anything like that they'll throw them off a roof and then sit there and go rape children so these churches are no different they promote things like that rape culture um i'm gonna go i'm just gonna go back and reflect uh, back to this point real quick um because i basically uh, made them equal to um the lgbtqs that they were basically speaking against and i call them trans antichrists okay and um <laughs> because the thing is is that th their doctrines are just as evil uh, where they're basically going around claiming that um if you're a uh, Christian, you'll surrender your rights. Yeah, they are an attack against Christianity, by the way, <laughs> which they actually declared war in our, in our, it was just a terroristic threats, by the way, and illegal. Um, oh, Oh, basically, they have attacked me for being a legalist um, because I teach what is lawful. And I'm not talking about the laws of man that can be broken, that uh, basically cause confusion and oppression. I'm talking about concrete laws of justice. Uh, I mean, there's Muhammad that basically, um, because he was attacking justice and people claiming what is just and true or wh whatever, he basically told um, his followers to actually rape women and children and called that justice. So that's actually, I think in, 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 in uh, Shirah um, 4, of the Quran, by the way. So <clears throat> that's many reasons why uh, a lot of evil people like to 
um, um, follow uh, the Quran or whatever and things like that. Um, it is evil. It is basically like these churches. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I call the Quran a, a plot, a self kill book or whatever to persecute anybody who doesn't follow Muhammad and his evils of well rape, incest, and um, um, all uh, many other abominations or whatever that he promoted to attack Christianity and those basically are against Christianity, by the way. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I was very confused. I um, uh, didn't even know what a Christian is. So this is what we see today where people don't know what a Christian is. And then you have these false churches convince people they're Christian and then send them over the country. And then, then Muslims will sit there and kill them. And then they'll sit there and basically uh, these false Christians will claim that they're all being persecuted or whatever in the name of Jesus Christ, which they are not. Okay, and it's a very dangerous thing because they are undiscerning and don't know what they're doing, and they're spiritually blind. They are actually part of basically uh, using these people to, um, because they have <clears throat> they don't understand the gospel and cannot and do not teach the true gospel. Um, they're basically causing part of the cause of basically people who um, are not basically. Um, Dying in the name of Christ, but in vain that they, um, not, I'm not saying that they're being vain. A lot of people are just like naive and ignorant in the state of mind that being taken advantage of. <clears throat> and, and many by these pen, fraudulent Pentecostals and they're teaching them how to sit there and scheme their own countries, by the way. Um, I mean, I'm sure it was there before, but I'm just saying, but, um, and they sit there and claim that they're saved, they're Christian and all these other things or whatever. Excuse me. And um, they're doing the same thing. They they put on these displays and get gather up the kids playing in, in, in their city or whatever, make them look poor or whatever, um, when they're just like kids playing in the dirt or whatever the case may be. And, um, and then sitting there and trying to get money from people and creating false ministries. So this is what basically these 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 ads on these TVs sitting there saying, no, help the poor in, in Africa or this place or this place or this place. And, needy. and yes, you should. You should. Okay. But the thing is, they're doing it to them, themselves while their own people are scamming them and basically taking the money. Okay, so it's really, really, it's a really terrible thing. So I mean, these are the fraudulent Pentecostals that basically was of the Jim Jones James Town uh, cult, who basically um, had his own followers drink poison or whatever. And um, also, and brainwash them with the f same false doctrines to just dummy them down. And basically, you have these people, these fraudulent Pentecostals, and, the, and their false ministers, fake healings, fake p uh, presentation of raising from the dead, fake um, um, just displays for everything that pervert everything about Jesus Christ. And it is these churches' fault, by the way. So, <clears throat> um, Getting them to eat grass, bow down and worship um, their leaders, rolling out red carpets for them. I'm sure they're set up to basically, um, you know, uh, uh, other people uh, to uh, mock uh, Christianity when they're not Christianity at all. Um, so I just want you to know also, we Christian ministers are not going to take money from anybody. We're also not going to um, <coughs> build big giant um mega man-made churches to sit there and say you got to pay the bills or whatever and lure people in or whatever and make it like you know this was like something modern or, or whatever the case may be and um you know and then they sit there and they live off of um how do i say this the people's money and yes the, the only place that they get their material things from which he claims is from god uh, it, it does come from the people, so I don't know if I'm going to pass that uh, over that or not. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to record this show. It's like almost nine minutes, so I'm going to um, record this. So I just want you to know, while he's sitting there, there could be another person, by the way, that's recording the videos. And police will sit there and do this, by the way. this is the, the, the main puppet masters of this is basically police. They're actually using the evil that's already there and basically want to be the master over it, okay? So um, the violent police has used them to basically lie to violent, brainwash people, and basically put on this display. Um, um, and basically use them to basically... Um, well, cover up the crimes in the New Jersey Police Department. So as they're also pretending that they're speaking against, like, corruption in the government, which only started happening from them. They're, they're, they falsely claim they're Republican, and they're not. They are Democratic-minded. Okay, what they're doing is, is a democracy, not Republican. 
Okay. So, um, and democracy is anti constitutional, anti republican, and tyrannical. Okay. Um, so they have their own rules that is actually against the law of justice, the constitution that is actually Christian, and against, well, the laws of Jesus Christ. Okay. <clears throat> so, and the prophets. So, which he actually deems a re as religiosity, by the way, and says he hates the religiosity. So um, I just want you to know the Pentecostals and police basically had this slanderous, vulgar, uh, false evaluation forged against me and basically said, oh, and then called all their lies and twisting my life that they try to put on me and then called that religiosity and said, that's who I am. Now, this is the anti-atheist uh, claimed atheist in our police department committing hate crimes against me, by the way. So, um, Slander made up all these things that um, had nothing to do with anything that I uh, actually ever did think and is against who I am and what I teach and preach. Amen? Come on, somebody shout. Okay, hold on. Pastor, pastor of this house, I'm not saying that we approve of that lifestyle. Just like we don't approve of your lifestyle if you're in secret sin and you're sitting there. Alright, let me back up. Means. Oh, some of you are a little bit confused. So I just want to say I said in another video I never seen that flag before or made any reference to that flag when I basically compared them equally to the LGBTQs and call them trans antichrist by the way. So um, it has something to do with basically what they were saying and how they're just as perverted, perversely evil as LGBTQs and made them equal. Um, I don't know what that. Oh, this is just a light shine on my hair. I'm like, what is that? Okay. Anyway, um, it seemed like something floating around my face. It's just a reflection of my hair. It's really weird. Okay. So, um, he's going to make an attack <clears throat> and look, they could set it up that somebody else was recording him. I don't, I don't know. They could be, but he's basically made attacks about me recording his blasphemous, false, evil doctrines, by the way, which is equal to rape. So they're going to sit there and pervert this thing and make, um, the Virgin Mary, um, being a teen, um, um, mother, okay, um, and attacks on me, attacks on, um, Jesus, uh, or me, or the prophets, um, um, grieving and depressing and having anxiety. Just let you know we all have anxiety, but he is actually going to equate having depression and anxiety, which is basically a spirit of, of grieving prophets against um, their abominations. Um, no depression, anxiety is not a mental illness, but he's going to sit there and try to equate uh, depression and um um, anxiety to a mental illness or a mental disorder, if you will. They don't know the difference. Mental illness is basically that of a, a brain, um, 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 injury or impairment. Okay. While well, mental disorder is kind of like, well, their minds. Okay. Like his mind, he's suffering from severe mental disorders. Okay. <clears throat> Where his main mind is unsanctified. Mental disorder is caused by willful choices, by the way. They will not basically, Come out and say that from the Psychiatric Association, which is the anti-Christian. Uh, the Psychiatric Association calls basically um, um, Christianity a mental disorder. Okay, and it deem and it has a, a lot of um, rules as long as it's basically against um, the prophets and Jesus Christ and anybody who has a revelation from heaven, they call a mental disorder, by the way. I just want you to know that. So the, the Psychiatric Association is, it is in fact, um, anti-Christian, by the way. So um, the thing is, I, yes, I do believe there's a mental disorder. All these churches have a mental disorder because um, they're unsanctified. Their thinking is delusional. Um, they have a lot of de delusional ideology. They will sit there. If I speak true knowledge, they will call me delusional for proving them wrong. That's some more of their delusions, trying to project their del delusions on me. The only reason that they have so many, um, and they're pathologically lying, is because they're they, they're delusional, like psychopaths, and that's psych psych psychopaths, a p a t h y. And um, a, 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 a name I basically coined myself, basically against o p a t h y, because it's more of the suffering of the mind, more than the indifference, um, uh, and compassionate mind. They display a compassion, which is more of a narcissism. Narcissism. They make up their own false rules to sit there and say I'm narcissist and selfish. Everything that I do is actually against what is selfish, and I just want you to know that um, anybody who speaks against true wrong, okay. 
okay? Um, anybody speaks truth, true righteousness against what is truly wrong. I'm sorry. Um, the person who's speaking righteous truth is selfless. The one who is basically justifying their evils and basically speaking against wrong is a selfish one because one destroys and one gives life, okay? So that's how that works. So um, I'm going to go on. This rainbow does not belong to the world. That's the sixth color rainbow. Our rainbow has complete is seven, not six. So, um, and it doesn't belong to the LGBTQs. And those are my words, by the way. And I said it in the church that basically, like I said in another video, I like, um, I found out that, um, it was actually Merlin Snook who basically was having conversation and sat there and claimed that their rainbow or whatever is um, LGBT. It's a symbol for LGBTQ and trying to justify them. I just want you to know that. So, um, and the thing is, it was just like, uh, no, I'm like, that was a promise or, uh, of God to the people or whatever. And um, the thing is, uh, no, the rainbow was <laughs> I promise. The rainbow was used as a symbol um, by the promise of God to the people. Okay. I have a poetry, uh, poem, by the way, it actually is from my, uh, uh, original circumstantial experiences from a child. And, um, I basically have this poem and, uh, identify the rainbow as basically, basically, uh, scientifically. And actually I didn't learn it scientifically. I had to look that up and it's, it's amazing. I was like, it was just amazing. But, um, uh, yeah, uh, rainbow is basically reflected of light and water. Many people know that. Um, I basically, uh, identify that spiritually, by the way, uh, and faith. And I basically, uh, and I'm not knowing that actually it was really strange because I was actually going through something and I lost my brother and he, di he disappeared. Um, my, these, these, uh, guardians or whatever, they're not guardians. Um, they, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, they abandoned my brother. Okay. And later abandoned me. And so I was like, I, I was, I wanted to, uh, huh, chase after the rainbow. If you will. <laughs> no, but I wanted to, uh, go to this rainbow that's seen like boat across the sky. And I actually across this highway that I wasn't supposed to, we weren't supposed to go past the end of the street. So, but I did, it was just like, a, a, it wasn't a busy highway or anything like that. It was just a two lane or whatever. And hardly any cars went by or whatever, but it was considered a highway. And I crossed over and I just, I wanted to go to this rainbow. <clears throat> and, um, when I basically, uh, was riding my bike and I almost got lost by the way, um, I realized I didn't know where I was and I had to find my way back, <laughs> but I went down all these streets I'd never been before. And I basically, um, um, started riding and the rainbow disappeared and I thought it went away. So basically I, when I went back, I turned, I turned back and it was there. So I, went, I tried to go back under the rainbow <laughs> And then I wrote back and I realized, um, and this is where I get my point from, um, about the rainbow. Um, and then, um, um, how do I say it? Um, how do I say this? Um, I'm trying to, okay. Let me just like, uh, something about like it, not knowing it's there, but it's there. Um, even though you can't see it. Okay. And I reflect this as, um, the Christ can't always see it. I'm sorry. I reflect this as a Christ as, uh, the water and the light. Okay. So, um, and that's how I actually, uh, wrote my, uh, uh, a poem about the rainbow. So I'm going to go on. All the devil can do is counterfeit and pervert everything that God has done. Now, let me make it very clear and I hope you have me, you're, you're, you're recording me this morning. Yep. And they basically have deleted videos and made excuses for this, this thing that's in their videos that they're using excuse why they were deleting videos. And it does have like uh, some infringement or whatever, but they try to sit there and use that as an excuse to, well, why they were deleting videos because, um, to hide basically what they said and did or whatever. And some of the stuff they say, they, they are saying they're using single words or phrases or whatever that basically are stealing from me and then slapping it on, um, um, they're blasphemous, false doctrines and, and, and teachings that are against Jesus Christ and the prophets. And like, he's basically, um, even made, um, 
statements basically because I use the word you're you're taking uh, Jesus' name, slapping it on your false doctrines or or Christ and these things things like that. So he tried to change it and said, oh well, you're 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 uh, slapping cr- uh, Christianity on. Um, I only teach Christianity, and Christianity, by the way, is the same as Christ. It's the same thing. So, um, but they try to divide Christ from Christianity. Like they try to divide, uh, the word of God and separate that from Jesus. I mean, that's a little off of comparison, but you get the idea. Um, so all their rules, by the way, is against the Holy spirit, which means they are exposed as never speaking by the Holy spirit, um, by the authority of the Holy spirit. So because I have authoritative original insight that proved their false doctrines wrong, they claimed authority, by the way, um, they're not authoritative because their doctrines are false and breakable so um the thing is they have not never been able to come against um me except for by their lies and slander and that was the first thing they run to and their false rules are by the way no gossiping no judging no complaining no finding fault um um no criticizing um and all, all these rules is everything that the holy spirit does against uh that's convicting against their um um these false anti-Christian cults, okay, that are not of the Christ as they falsely claim to be. So, and it doesn't mean they're damned forever. Um, you know, the, you'll know who basically is able to repent, those who repent. They claim repentance, they do all these things, and they pick and choose, you know, what truth to accept or whatever, and then they copy my words and still continue in their sins. So, as long as they're continuing and speaking the gibberish speech, they're falsely calling um, the Holy Spirit and the only evidence of the Holy Spirit. It's actually the only evidence that they're not of the Holy Spirit and against the Holy Spirit. So, the only evidence of the Holy Spirit is the unbreakable wisdom and understanding that comes from God that sanctifies a people which they do not. So we love everybody in this house. To love everybody is to stand in truth. That's the only way you can love people. This is what they don't understand. They always promoted a false love. By the way, they're continuously slandering me. There's no lies in love. I was standing in their church when their false um, minister, Jason Scalzi, was persecuting me, even had me falsely arrested and jailed, by the way, for basically speaking against uh, abuses in their churches. And um, basically um, was slandering me and make sure nobody hears me, made up all kinds of lies or whatever. Okay. And people were questioning him about his gibberish spe- uh, speech or whatever. And police were asking, well, how come we never heard you speak that? They're like, oh, oh that only happens uh, in church on Sundays. We're not bound by their man-made church and we are the church and it doesn't change whether we step into any man-made church, false church, evil, uh, place or, um, um, any place on earth or whatever case, uh, the case may be, whether it be like, you know, the whorehouse of these, uh, antichrist churches or basically, you know, the park that is, you know, organic. I want an organic park. So I'm just <laughs> saying. If you are LGBTQ, ABC, and I'll speak in tongues or whatever you, he does not speak in tongues as much, uh, <clears throat> uh, mentioned, uh, I'm sorry, recording our Bible. Tongues recording our Bible is a parabolic language that speaks the perfect wisdom and understanding that comes from the kingdom of God. So they're often blaspheming and basically claiming they're speaking by the Holy Spirit while they're, when they speak their gibberish speech. And then they make up all kinds of things that is false knowledge. You think you are. Whatever you identify with, we love you. No perfect people allowed it. He has always made up. They have called me a devil. They have called me a demon. They have always slandered me. And basically he makes attacks against me for speaking the holy truth against them. Okay, there are no lies in love. This is why I sat there and, and told Jason Scalzi. I sat there and there was like this blasphemous stealth, um, uh, false song or whatever. And I started crying over it and watching the people like sing and act like they're praising the God or whatever. And Jason Scalzi turns around and comes up to me. He's standing next to his wife and I'm, I'm like, Four, maybe four pews back or whatever he comes around he just happened to like turn around I didn't make any noises or anything and uh, I mean I don't know maybe I did I breathed wrong or, or sniffled or something I, I but I didn't cry out loud or anything or made it known um he came up to me and said I love you I ignored him I, I basically was like a slight little rebuke, whatever, because he was persecuting me and lying about me. And then after church, he comes up to me. He's like, I love you. I'm like, there's no lies in love. 
So, and this is what they don't understand. In this house, God doesn't keep us where he found us. But by no means am I affirming the LGBTQ community by waving this flag. Irritates me. So Wait. we're gonna. So he basically um, mocked because they were causing, because they caused grief and pain to people. And then sitting there claiming that, oh, well, the devil gets mad and because we irritate them is what they were doing. And they were actually calling people the devil is what they were doing. And a demon. I have taught over the years, many, many times. Um, first of all, there's only one devil and people are not devils. I never call them a devil. I will call them mind rapers because they're mind raping people. I do not bear false witness against people. And they have called me, a, there were so many of them called me a demon for basically speaking uh, the, the the true word of God that basically was against their evil. And their, their evil that they speak was actually damning them themselves. And I kindly enlightened them with the true word of God or whatever. They called me a demon. I, and I even basically when I was doing street ministry and stuff and they would come around or whatever, they would sit there and call me a demon because I would basically, well, um, show how like they're speaking lies and basically, um, well, how evil the teachings was. I didn't call, I didn't say at the time that your teaching is evil, your teaching is wrong, even though I could say that. But the thing is, I just basically enlightened them or whatever. I mean, I have in other places or whatever, but, um, you know, the thing is, it's just that, I mean, that's all they did. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, people aren't demons. I believe as of today, we have three marijuana dispensaries in our city with more yeah. being planned. So he claims to be the body of Christ. He is going to basically damn um, teenage uh, women who are pregnant, which is... I mean, some are in adultery, but you know what? Look, um, two who willfully give themselves to each other, okay, um, because they want to be together. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't have the knowledge of, like, spending the rest of them, their lives with them. There are men who take advantage of women and leave them to be, what, alone or go to somebody else. And this is the confusion that happens or whatever. And the thing is, th there is nothing wrong. These people made up lies that, you know, it's adultery if you're basically together and you don't have a marriage certificate. Like, I had, I, I used it many times before I wrote about it, but I just looked it up again. And basically it was like this, well, I use it. I don't think I use the time date or whatever, but I said the medieval t um, uh, era or whatever um, is when they basically created the, the marriage certificate, which actually caused chaos because what it was about is basically um, you weren't allowed to be married unless it was proved by their church. Okay. These are Catholics and it's basically spread to all these other people or whatever. Um, the thing is, it's just that, but, um, the average marriage age was 16, by the way. Um, the marriage certificate, if you don't have marriage certificate, it's not adultery. I've been harassed online by people because I refuted people coming in, uh, coming in and said, oh, are you, are you living um, in an adulterous relationship or premarital sex? There's no such thing as premarital sex. There's no such thing. If you two willingly give to yourselves to each other, which, which is what should be teaching the teachings that are biblical, like marriage certificates are not biblical. Okay. And nobody needs any of these churches approvals or to go by any of these churches approval. So I was just looking up something that basically, um, actually it's not it. The reality is, uh, I don't know if this is it. I want to use this article because, like, I know the information is on there and it's just like, um, but the reality is up to like 1600s, like the, the average marriage was 16 years old. That's when uh, the, the female is, um, full, um, fully developed and fully grown. Stop when they stop growing. That is what is equated to basically, um, the flower when it comes to bloom, it grows, and when it comes to bloom, it opens. Okay. So, and, um, the thing is you have Islam who basically perverted that and try to t change it. And Catholics, by the way, try to change that and claim, oh, it's when they get their menstrual. Oh, it's when this happens or this happens or whatever case may be. And to sit there and, uh, there were pedophiles, there are pedo rapists. And it was just like, they try to pervert everything. Um, like these churches here, um, in scripture. So, um, 
I'm gone. So it's really sad that Tony Cotta is going to sit there and equate people who um, are in suffering that express depression and um, um, anxieties. Then they try to change it a little bit. Oh, chronic or whatever. Uh, I suffer chronic pain. Look, if you suffer chronic physical pain, you're going to express anxiety and depression. Anxiety and depression is the outward... Um, um, how do I say, indicators, if you will, to basically identify a suffering, whether it be from other people's unjust oppression or medical problems and things like that or whatever. The thing is, we're always expressing a depression, anxiety, no matter what. Okay, so he's been, he's not speaking about the Holy Spirit. When they sit there and pray against um, depression, anxiety, and tell God to take away depression, anxiety, the guy's not going to do that. Okay, because it's in his design, and depression does not hurt, and basically, um, anxiety is a reaction to basically that something is wrong, and they're indicators to identify that something's wrong. Like I said, whether it be medically, or you're being abused, or threatened, or there's a threat of harm to your body, and things like that, or whatever. These are designed by God, uh, that is in our DNA, um, and the uh, uh, claim against anxiety and depression is basically a sin to do depression and anxiety is not a sin to basically uh, speak against depression anxiety is a sin and it's against god so um he's trying to equate depression anxiety and teenagers having babies to equal to crimes of robbery rape and all these things while they're mind raping i can sit there and equate their lies to rape but they're basically going to equate reactions, natural reactions, by the way, and call that equal to rape. They're the ones promoting rape culture. They're the ones promoting and vilifying victims of abuse. And the prosecutor's office and police are abusing and terrorizing victims of domestic violence, by the way. So, I'm going to go on. And when, when I see what the enemy is trying to do to the body of Christ... They have persecuted me over the years so many times, psychologically just like slandered me to torture me, and they were used by police to commit hate crimes against me. Because I have severe nerve, nerve damage caused by uh, physical torture and uh, mental torture, um, they, Ralph Snook, police use Ralph Snook to basically, um, after church, when I come up to him, because they knew that I had this, um, uh, neurological pain, which basically feels like, like razors ripping through like my body and it's hurt. And they have actually used him and gave them the information. So I don't sit there and come up to Ralph Snook and basically confront him about, well, the sins that he just committed against everybody and their false doctrines while they're mind raping people, which I was there always kind to him every time. They basically turn now up the, the mic, he gave me an indicator, like up where the area where their, their equipment is or whatever, and put up a high pitch or whatever through the auditorium. They would actually, I walked in there and their lighting was extremely bright more than normal. Okay, even if you had a bright room, more than normal, or whatever, where they knew that that I could I could not even sit in that room or whatever. I had to go like there was like there was this lip or whatever it went up like this or whatever. They were sitting in the back or whatever. I actually had to sit back there because of the lighting. These were the, these were the violent New Jersey Police Department that using them to harass me and torture me. Um, and this is what they have been using Pentecostals to do or whatever. They're, they basically hate me with a severe hate because of my righteousness and the laws of justice of God. And they're using him because of them because I basically exposed them and spoke against them and how evil the evil they are and how they're speaking child pedo rapist um doctrines that silences victims of domestic violence. Vi not violent New Jersey Police Department are literally abusing and torturing and terrorizing traumatized innocent victims of domestic violence. When I see the attack of the enemy on the body of Christ... It irritates me beyond all. Oh, and when they're sitting there claiming victims because I was speaking against them, insulting victims. Oh, we're not victims. Oh, victimhood or victim, which they did actually not too long ago. So it's hypocritically speaking against himself and playing these little games. But they were sending this trend all over the place, sitting there insulting victims. Stop playing victim. You're not a victim. 
So they were actually used in uh, different uh, media outlets, uh, mainstream, um, popular uh, media outlets to sit there and get the idiots who are running them to um, that are no different than these fraudulent Pentecostals, even though they may be speaking against them one way or the other, one to the other, the other to them. So, um, and they're basically trying to promote them the, uh, to insult victims, by the way. So they did the same thing. So now they're pr- trying to pretend that they're, they're basically, um, um, recognizing what a victim is or whatever, but I went through this for years and they slandered me every time. Sure. But it, what irritates me more are believers that don't understand their identity. They don't. And you know what? Believers actually understand our identity. I understand my identity. But the reason why people don't understand our identity because they were part of the churches who were stripping people's identity away. That's what they were doing. It's all these false doctrines were doing. Okay? And they were doing it in relation to race. To every race. Not just one particular race, but every race. They're doing it today. So, you know, there's, you can sit there and speak against the sexually immoral who are lost from their true identity, but so are they. They don't understand their authority. So they sit under the attack of the enemy. The only authority there is, is what comes from God that is in true wisdom and understanding. And those who are authoritative that speak it are basically those who submit to God's word and they claim God's word is their falsehood that is not authoritative. Day in. Day out, week in, week out. They become victims. That irritates me. And he's blaming people who don't know their identity that they're victims because they don't know their identity. This is another manipulation tactic um, that they're using. I know who I am, by the way. And Jesus was a victim, by the way. And so this is police basically manipulating. They sit there and slander you, make up who you are. Say you don't know yourself, and that's why you're a victim. And this actually abomination actually started in Vine Nazarene Raymond Church. And blame me for being a victim of domestic violence. And oh, while I was their victim also, and told me I don't know myself why they were slandering me. They literally did that. False Pastor Dawn Reed, sitting there lying about others, um, uh, Lee King, San Piero, spread their little lies or whatever. And why they're slandering me and it's claiming their slander is my identity. That doesn't line up with who I am. It irritates me to no end. In the city of Vineland in 20 and 21, check this out. We, we had a population of about 62,000 people in, in this city. We had 292 assaults, six murders. 29 rapes, 58 robberies, 334 burglaries, 1,700 thefts, and 70 motor vehicle thefts. In this city, it might be more now, this is based from 2021. In this city right now, we have four or five pornographic or adult themed shops. We have 17 liquor stores. The abortion rate is up. Teenage pregnancy is up. They're equating teenage pregnancy, which is not a sin. I mean, if you're you're if you're not fully developed and fully grown, it's not an abomination. But if you're going around like 13, 12, uh, 9, 11 or whatever, you're not accountable for the sin. You are a rape victim. And, um, the thing is, the reality is, the reality is if you're a 10 year old and you were raped by your dad or even not a family member or whatever, it won't be an abortion. It'll be a medical procedure that will save their lives. And I'm not against that. I'm against like people who get abortions because they don't want a baby. They need to take responsibility and recognize and value life. But the thing is they don't value life, but you can be holy and 16 years old and have a baby. 
The problem is, is that these churches are creating separation uh, from men, basically taking accountability and support their own child and will not teach the truth that when you come together in agreement um, 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 intimately, okay, sexually, and you have a child, you are married. You don't have to have a child, but you are in fact married. Marriage certificate is not biblical. And those who claim that basically um, who, who those who have a child and trying to sit there and bring confusion and claiming that they're in this unabominable sin and they're equal to rapists or, or poor, people who have pornography and all this other stuff or whatever, they don't ever teach marriage. They go around and they're saying, rightly, yeah, oh, marriage between a man and a woman. What does that mean? You can actually, you know what? There's a thing. Um... I'm going to have to do another video on that because I don't, it's already too long. I don't want it that long, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go on. Drug and, drug and alcohol addiction and usage is up. I believe as of today, we have three marijuana dispensaries in our city with more being planned. Did you hear me? Three marijuana dispensaries in our city with more being planned. The school dropout rate is up. The teenage pregnancy rape, uh, pregnancy in girls obviously is up. The high school is accommodating teenagers that identify as animals, and they have kitty litter, kitty litter things in the bathrooms for them. That's not a rumor. Chronic mental health issues are up. Anxiety, depression. Over-the-counter medication, prescriptions, and over-the-counter stuff. People are just taking it like it's candy. More than ever, people are confused about their sexual identity. That's actually the church's fault, by the way. So, um, especially since all, all, like a majority of sexual abuse w is with, uh, within people of the anti Christ churches, he's falsely claiming to be Christian. Let me tell you something that I just, this irritates me. I'm irritated today. If you can't tell, I'm just irritated. Let me make it very clear. Make sure that camera's on my fat face so they can hear what I'm going to say. So I spoke against him and, um, so I spoke against him and then I called, I called, I called him fat or something like that. I said, at least I'm not like a lazy and, and regarding to their laziness and their greed and they're scamming people out of money, which is more their, um, no different than the LGBTQ. Um, they're robbing souls. Okay. They're robbing people of money. So, um, I'm going to re I'm going to repeat that. And I said, I didn't get fat because I basically was lazy and basically gluttonously like stuffed my face. Okay. So, um, and he's like an adult, he's like a sin indulgent. Okay. He's no different than basically a whore. Okay. Um, so especially since he's basically was scamming a scammer who's scamming people out of money. Yes. And scammed him out of money. All right. And he's hustling him for money. To sit there and say, well, whatever they say. So, I'm going to go on. That is not of God. Teenagers that identify as animals. And they have kitty litter, kitty litter things in the bathrooms for them. That's not a rumor. Chronic mental health issues are up. Anxiety, depression. I just want you to know people who basically indulge in overeating have reactions of anxiety, depression, anxiety, depre depression reacts to anything that is wrong rather than to your, from your own sins or basically the sins of others. So if you're beaten, which I was a victim of domestic violence and they were insulting because of it. So if I'm being beaten off, I mean, I basically, that's when I basically first actually sought out support, um, um, for actually depression and depression. I was confused about that, but I was going against what they were trying to convince me. 
I, I mean, I had, you know, insightful knowledge to who I am, by the way, um, but I was overwhelmed. So I basically uh, sought somebody for domestic violence, abuse or whatever, because I was feeling overwhelmed or whatever. I just needed to reach out to somebody. And um, so the thing is, it's just like they tried to basically, well, give me Zoloft and I, I was like rejecting it or whatever. And I'm like, I, you know, they're, they're like, you have PTSD. I didn't have PTSD then. I did research. I went back and I'm like. I don't think I had PTSD and they're convincing me that I did. And I did want PTSD when I'm through another, uh, I went through a number of them, but an a, a extreme, um, um, trauma. I went into, um, shock, acute stress. Um, and I was in shock and it was around 2004. And, um, the thing is, it's just that, um, th- I, 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 I was like, I, I got through the acute stress. I d- identified it after I did. They told me about acute stress. I never heard that term before. So I reflected back and it's just like, okay, I experienced acute stress before. And I remember coming through it, coming through it. And I fought really hard to actually get through it this time. And I mean, months were going by year went by years went by and I'm like, I'm fighting and surviving, right? They insulted surviving when I use the word surviving, but, um, I was basically, I was trying to stand strong, stand, I was trying to stand strong for my children and get out of this or whatever. Um, that's when I started volunteering in, in the vine and I basically, at the, the store, the vine ministry or whatever. And I started standing up against people like stronger than I've ever, ever did before. And it was just like, everything was just coming against me. I, it was every, the whole, system, even these churches, the courts, police, made sure that victims are not heard and nor had rights. And they still doing that, by the way. So, um, I'm going to go on. So I'm going to record this. So the thing is, I sit there and, um, you know, I tell people, you know, don't fight the depression or anxiety. You know, you, you, you can, you can heal within and things like that or whatever. And some, some people get to the point of over that barrier. Like I have PTSD. I, I finally accepted it every year or whatever. No, I never, I never took anything after that. Like, I mean, I tried it, like I was resisting them. Like they were trying to shove it like down my throat prepped. <laughs> just try it, just try it, just try it. And basically I noticed there was a couple of things that were happening. Um, I, I wasn't able to respond to some things. And I was actually suffering like some kind of a, a brain impairment. Like, I mean, I, I, w- I was scared because I was actually driving my kids one day and I couldn't let go of the steering wheel. You know how dangerous that is when you're basically driving? So, and I come to a stop, I couldn't let go. And the thing is, there's like other things that are happening. I stopped taking it or whatever. And so there's more to the story than that, but I'm not going to make about that. I could talk about another video, but um, I'm going to go on. Here you go. We got a recording. Over the counter medication, prescriptions, and over the county stuff, uh, people are just taking it like it's candy. More than ever, people are confused about their sexual identity. Let me tell you something about that. I just, this irritates me. I'm irritated today, if you can't tell. I'm just irritated. Let me make it very clear. Make sure that camera's on my fat Got face. Got it. hear what I'm going to say. It's on your fat face. If you were born with a penis, you're a man. And if you're born with a vagina, you're a woman. That's it. Nothing in between. If you think anything else, you're confused. And you need God's help. Okay, so there are males that are born with a vagina, and there are uh, females that are born with a penis. And there are um, her her more. I was actually going to post this. Um, I can't even say it. Hermaphrodite, hermaphrodites. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to look it up again. I'm going to post it and write about it a bit. Um, are, is God confused? Well, like, what is what is that actually? Really? Um, you know what? Um, I mean, who knows? Like, Jesus could have been born with, like, a vagina and a penis. Is it a deformity or is it not? I mean, it can be. Um, that would mean Jesus would not be perfect. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, look. I, I know that Jesus was born with both, but you know what? People just don't really know that. But, um, the whole point of it is, it's just that, um, 
um, yeah, the, the whole point of, look, the reality is, is uh, yes, it, it is basically a, um, uh, yeah, people are probably going to, um, <laughs> Go on me with that one. And you're like, okay, it was Jesus perfect or not? Look, um, this is the thing. Um, uh, I I do believe. No, I don't believe that Jesus was born with both or whatever. But um, look, if, look, if Jesus spoke the word of God, no matter who he was or whatever, perfectly, and submitted to the God, uh, every will of God, perfectly all his life, and he was still basically well had a deformity for some reason or another, um, I was still listen. I listened for the word. So, you know, whatever the case may be. So, um, the thing is the word can come out of anybody's mouth, but, uh, anyway, I'm going to go on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, people, please question that if you want to. Okay. So it has been, um, used for comparison to basically, um, hold on. Her methodate. Her meth. Okay, so um, and but this has been used by atheists a lot actually, um, to basically uh, uh claim that God made a mistake or something, especially and they use other deformities and things like that or whatever. Um, then this is also trying to be used to be equivalent to LFBTQs or RPs or whatever. So um, the thing is, it's just that it cannot 